YouTube, we're gonna open this box right now. Here it is, something brand new, super exciting. We love when we have the opportunity to bring you guys something that's brand new and this is gonna be no exception. So we're excited to be bringing you this. All right, what do we have here? I know it's fast. Ooh, it's one of the white boxes. Oh no. <laughs> Amazing. That's exciting. Yeah, we should make that the thumbnail. We should. Um, okay, so I am going to try to slide this out. Hopefully there's not a packing list that pops out. They usually, they usually do at some point. So I'll just drop this down if I can get it to go. Your packaging will actually have artwork on it, folks. Still a mystery. Any guesses? <laughs> you have to timestamp it if you guess right. It's a scooter. No. E-bike. No. It's got some foam in it. Okay. There some you go. Foam. It's a good sign. Okay. All right, guys. Here it goes. So this is brand new. Like I said, this is an early release. So what's going to happen is this is a product sample. And so that way there's more available for you when you order from the links in the video description below. Here it comes. You right that up. Ooh, yes. Oh, cool. Ooh, yes. I like it so far. Yeah, me too. It's a Viper 64. You can tell that just from the bottom. <laughs> just from the bottom, exactly. So I'll put the unmarked ambiguous white box away. Okay guys, so this is brand new from E-Flight. Super excited to be bringing you this. Looks like the tape is already cut too, which is nice. Makes it even easier. Okay, so there's some hand launch holes. Okay, quick Ooh, release yellow. wing, which is sweet. That should make it really easy. We do have flaps inboard and ailerons, as well as LEDs, forward facing, and nav lights, that's awesome. Protected flap and aileron servos so that when you do grass landings, perfectly matched but not perfectly aligned. Tape, okay, unpainted white naked foam. Some of you won't like that, I like the yellow. Mm-hmm, me too. Okay, so we're just gonna show you this whole unbox build and radio setup like we always do. Okay, so there's some landing gear if you want. Looks like uh, this one here must be the nose gear. It's got like a hex drive on it. It's kind of different looking. Mm -hmm. Spring loaded. Um, the tires are not rock hard, but, oh. they're, but they're not soft. They're not so I'm not either. sure if it's because the Oleo does that. Oh, these are magnetically attached, it looks like. Yeah, magnetically attached. Oh, nice. See? So that's pretty sweet. So the ventral fins will pop off and not be damaged, which is really nice because if you do a belly landing on a Viper, the ventral fins will pop off. Oh man, this makes me very happy. Oh, that's pretty that small. That is a small nut and bolt sack. In fact, let's do a piece count here. They're my favorite. Let's do a piece count. We've got landing gear two here. Sweet, all three of them are spring loaded. Very simplistic, but aluminum, CNC'd from one piece. And instead of a Y fork, it, it just goes off to one side, which is sweet. And then just a super simple spring mechanism. I like that it's simple. It looks I like nice. that it's light. Yeah, it's very light. Yeah, I don't have any problem with that. These are these these, and it's hard to tell. I don't know if they're soft. They're they're pretty darn hard. They're worked in a little bit because it's a product sample. Okay, nose which is magnetically attached. Okay, and then we're getting down to the uh, the money shot here. But I'm going to pull out the horizontal stabilizer. So the horizontal stab ball link on everything. I don't know if I mentioned that already. Okay, that looks pretty good. Looks like an unreinforced hinge though. It's kind of hard to tell if there's tape on that. There might be a piece of tape. It's really hard to see. But it looks like just a pinch hinge on that. So some of you guys are not gonna like that aspect. Um, smaller planes don't need as much support there. Oh yeah, beautiful. And then an Avian ESC 70 amp 3S to 6S capable. And then the motor, since we can take this out and look at it, it shows, looks like an outrunner, 2840, 3150 KV. So it's a really fast motor, which is to be expected. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But there would be a manual in a normal circumstance because we didn't have a manual in ours. Mm, you will. Not pieces, you don't have to put that together. 
Okay, so we're going to build this plane without a manual. It's going to be hard to believe. That goes on okay, really hard. On. Now, hold on. Watch this build. Guys, this is my type of build. Watch Two. this. Whoa. I could have built this. Three. Whoa. Okay. Those things are strong, too. I know. I could Did tell. you see them snap? Yeah. We're getting, the piece count's going low. Yeah. These, you know how they put on the marketing? They're like, five minute build, 15 minute build. I this think this is one like might the one actually time they be. could have said that actually. Okay, so two plugs and two alignment pins. Okay, so when I slide this on, I just want to be careful. And I love it. They have six wires that are transmitting all the signal and all of the power and ground. I just took apart a dynam plane the other day. Holy cow, there was like 4,000 wires <laughs> going to the terrible. wing. I think I had like a small... Um, well, let's just say it was bad. We could have started our own plane factory. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six screws on one wing. That's yep. a lot of screws. And those are all the same size. Okay. So basically, just take any of the screws. There's a bind plug in here, too. And there's one. This one's the thumb, thumb nut, which must be for something. I don't know what it's for. I don't know what that's for. I couldn't figure it out. It is weird, though. Look at this. The, um, the EDF cover is the same part as the wing. Which is unusual. That's well, it's usually not a very big plane. No, it's really not. But I love the look of it. First yeah. of all, it looks just like the big ones, but it's small. And you guys know I love wheels up, wheels down, and that's a big part of what I do. But if I can fly these things, hand launch, and have an enjoyable experience, and I'm all about it too. And the thing I like about this is they've designed it to actually work as a hand launch. The only thing I don't like is that they put these clips going forward. That's going to catch grass. They should have mounted these the other way because mm. then it would have uh, deflected the grass. But the reason they do that is because then the landing gear can't get pulled out. When you land, the wheels can't yank back. Also with thrust reverse, I'm assuming we'll be able to take advantage of thrust reverse. Okay. This is two millimeters, by the way, if I didn't mention that. So two millimeter drive. Makes it really easy. And if you guys haven't already experienced the Viper, it is an amazing platform. Very fun plane. Um, the Viper can bite though, so you gotta be careful. Uh, especially if you get it low and slow and you get into the wrong attitude, the thing can tip stall something fierce. So just be careful. Keep your speed up, keep the nose down when you're coming in for landings. And if you're on base leg, you make a tight turn don't let it slip out from under you. It's just the way that it always goes with these planes if you're not careful. And that's true of pretty much any plane, to be honest. Really, really, really easy build though. Yeah, it is. I wish they were all like this. Yeah, me too. All right, I'm gonna flip the plane the other way so you guys have a better vantage point. Okay, so we'll flip this thing over. We'll just put it that way. And three more screws what is that last what one for? What is that for? little thumb screw for? Oh, it's for the landing gear. It's for the for landing the nose? gear. For the nose gear. Because you can put this on, or maybe it goes on here. But either way, I'll figure that out in a minute. Okay. All right, so the horizontal stabilizer and elevators, don't forget to attach your elevators if you're the type of person that takes this thing apart. This is a small enough assembly that you can almost do this you can almost plan to do it. You see how I rotated that in? Mm -hmm. If you try to go like this, you'll catch your rudder. So I would suggest going in from the side like this, and then you will be under the material, and it just slides up into position. I love the trim livery on yes, this. Yes, me too. I just hope the yellow doesn't disappear. It never seems to disappear like I think it might. And there's some people mm -hmm. that get really hard on about not having a fully painted body. I'm not one of those people, I don't care. I just, I'm, I mean, it's lighter that, you know, I'll take the advantages I can get. Okay, so three screws. This should be really easy. And then we'll be pretty much ready for, are we going to just do the landing gear to show people wheels up, wheels down right off the bat? Or are we going to do a hand launch right off the bat? I would think we would do wheels up, wheels down. That's kind of what you like. Yeah. Okay, so there's that. And there's that. Guys, if you're brand new to Brian Phillips RC, just remember what we do here is we help teach you what you need to know to do the things that you want to do getting back into the hobby or if you're brand new to the hobby. And the way we do that is by helping you pick 
whatever plane might work for you in your current circumstances. And sometimes that means we're, you know, bringing a plane before you that's brand new, it's a new release, it might not be a good fit for you. I just look at this and I think, boy, I wonder if they're trying to hit the same market as like the Habu market because the Habu is such an easy to fly plane, but I feel like the Viper is so much better looking. Mm. The Habu is super fun, really easy, reliably good trainer jet, but the Viper would be, I mean, this would definitely be up there in the beginning stages of If you're wanting EDF a cool jets. looking jet. Yeah, right. Well, and I don't know what skill level they suggested on the packaging because we oh, didn't see the packaging. We just, we just write a number on our white box. Yeah. We just put 10. Give them our own suggestion. Skill level 10. Skill level 10. This is like the easiest build we've ever done, I think, on this channel. Yeah. So I am <laughs> so happy about this. Okay, as you can see, the piece count, and this includes having to fix an EDF module that was out from product development, guys. That is so sweet. I love it. It's so cute compared to the 90. It's yeah, dinky. It is. But you know what? Let's go ahead and let's show them inside real quick. Okay. Be careful you don't drop it because that magnetic attachment. Wow, that looks really good. Ah, AS3X Plus. We don't there have to is. install that. We don't have to upgrade that. Ooh, safety first, right? Yes. So let me go ahead and get my safety tool out so I can uh, take care of that safety. Hey, what, uh, what type of battery are you supposed to use? Um, I'm gonna look at my blank box and guess 4S2200. <laughs> 4S2200 is probably what I assume too. So we're gonna, we're gonna just assume 4S2200. We're gonna throw it on the S2200 charger and just let this thing go. So one of the reasons we love the smart chargers, especially a dual 200 watt unit, is that I can just plug them in and they go and I don't have to think about it. And then the batteries will automatically discharge based on the timing that I set, which is 240 hours for us. That's a little long. If you guys are going to the flying field and you know you're gonna be there for a couple of days and then you're not gonna be flying for like two weeks, I would suggest setting that time lower. But for us, we never know exactly when we're gonna be flying. Yep. And so we're in a little bit of a unique circumstance in that regard. Oh shoot, that fell off, weird. Um, also, I just want to point out this wire. What the frick? That's the elevator. That's the elevators. They have a ball link up and down on there. Oh. And then the wires are wrapped around it. What the heck were they thinking on that? That is a really bad idea. You see what's going on there? Man, I don't like that. Hmm. See what's going on? Yeah. That can't, that can't be the way that they're doing that. I'm hoping that's an early sample thing. Yeah, I wonder if they were just messing with something. Well, all I've got to say is I've got some ball link pliers here and we're gonna use them to snap on our elevator. Now, normally we wouldn't do this, but since this was a product sample, we probably shouldn't have to adjust. And by the way, let's look at this. This is the steerable nose gear, okay? So, toolless install, okay? So here is the thumb nut. Thumb nut comes out. Obviously this goes up in. Very nice. When that gets all the way in, then I can take and turn this. And uh, we'll just uh, slide that on. And one of the biggest features of AS3X Plus is the nose gear stabilization. So hopefully we'll be able to show that off, but I guess I don't know. It depends on if they use the channel or not. Okay. I don't know if they have enough channels for that on this plane because it's got flaps. But it doesn't have gear. So five is oh, yeah. open. Hmm, that's true. Look, there it is. so they have a Y cable for the rudder. What? Oh, they're stealing power for the lights and stuff, I wonder. Why do they have so many rudder plugs? That is so weird. I don't know, I guess we'll see. All right, so you can see the nose gear is in now. Okay. And we'll go ahead and put this in. Everything feels fine, canopy looks nice. Pilot figurine looks good. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know this, but the, until recently, but the Viper is a real plane. You can actually get a Viper. It's an experimental. Very easy to snap in. Okay. 
very easy to snap in. Okay, there you have it. Let's check them on the countertop here. Whoa, wow. super soft. That is a lot of movement. That's why the tires are hard. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter. Okay, so my only question is the uh, nose gear. I wonder if the nose gear, if we're going to have to split that out, that'd be a pain. I don't want to have to do that. Okay, let's show the people what I'm doing here. So this is the elevator. I'll go ahead and push these on. Snap them on like that. Even though they're not aligned? No. Okay. Doesn't really matter yet. Because my guess is that once it springs to life, it's gonna go back into the home position where it needs to be. Okay. Okay, so that thing is ready to rock and roll. That has gotta be the quickest build we've ever done. It's been 21 minutes and we fixed the EDF. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> okay, so our next move is gonna be setting up the transmitter. So we do this unbox build radio setup in a routine uh, standard pattern. And we're gonna use the NX10. Just so you guys know, full disclosure, we finally updated to AS3X Plus on all of our receivers that are in queue waiting to go into bind and or plug and fly planes but we also updated all of our transmitters. Each of the transmitters took us about, well, the downloading process, which was internet-based, was probably about like five, 10 minutes, but the actual update took about four and a half minutes. So mm -hmm. it was very quick and it worked really good. We haven't found any problems yet, um, other than it does seem a little bit more boggy on my transmitter, but I have so many models in here. So we should be done uh, with our build so I can put cool. all this stuff away right yeah I think so yeah we don't need the bind plug because we already have this thing uh we have the push button we can press so we'll just save that for a later date when we need it and then we have a 4s 2200 actually we'll pause and double check something all right so we are going to use shelf liner instead of velcro because I don't I'm not a big fan of having velcro on my batteries Although this particular one has Velcro on it already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically just gonna take and lay this on to the shelf liner. We got a solid shelf liner. Instead of the ones like this that have like little dots in them. Mm -hmm. And this is gonna be better, I hope, because that adhesive does have a tendency to wanna bleed through when you get packs really hot, okay? So as you can see, super easy. This stuff is cheap, it's like, I don't know, 10 or $11 for a roll. And you can get a million battery Velcros out of it. Mm -hmm. And I do this, and then I basically just stick it down inside the plane. And all that does is it just stops the battery from being able to slide real easy with just limited pressure down. I should not do that in a curve though, because it kind of like- Curved the- Curved the stuff. It'll probably stick to the Velcro and flatten itself back. It out. should flatten out. So guys, if you're brand new to Brian Phillips RC, a lot of times the builds are harder than this, but this one is just plain and simple easy. Mm -hmm. So I'm super happy about that. The shelf liner trick is definitely an optional choice. I would highly recommend you do it because it'll help keep your batteries where your batteries need to be. I just hope we don't find out this thing is supposed to be on 6S or something crazy. Because I'm pretty sure it's 4S. We're gonna find out right now though. I'm certain we're okay with 4S. I'm just not sure we can go up higher. Pretty good long, long cable. So 2200 4S, 30C pack. I'm gonna flip it so that we have the Velcro up. Okay. Probably be hard pressed to get a 6S battery in Well, there. if you had a small 6S battery, maybe. Just depends on what size you got. So one of the reasons why I really like the shelf liner is because it holds the battery. It stops it from sliding back and forth. And it's similar function to what the Velcro would do. The Velcro is gonna hold it really tight, okay? And that's fine, but I've found that the only time I really care if my battery slips is during an accident. Like when I actually straight up crash a plane, then it kind of matters. Okay, so in order to do this build, we'll be doing a little bit of guesswork because we can't really mark the CG. We don't have the manual yet. And so the CG is gonna be somewhere in here. 
My guess is we're just gonna be centered on the battery strap, okay? And that's the way we gotta do it on this. But normally we would take some calipers and measure back however, you know, 60 to 62 millimeters or whatever it is. And then we would mark the wing and I would just flip it upside down and test it. But since we can't do that on this, we're gonna go ahead and plug it in and I wanna get the servos centered. I don't know if it's even gonna do that though, cause it might not in initiate. I don't think it will. Okay, so we'll come back to that here in a minute. What is the next step for us? We have to build a profile. So profile in the transmitter is fairly easy to do. So obviously turn on your transmitter. I'm gonna cancel them back and go to add new model, create. And then basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a Viper profile. And the other thing you can do is you can download a bind and fly profile, but I don't recommend it myself because I wanna learn how to use this, one of the most expensive tools in your tool bag. And that's of course your transmitter. Okay, so model select, we just came from there, model type. We already set an acro, model name. This is where we're gonna type in the Viper Jet, okay? So we'll be right back. Okay, so we have the Viper 64, so we'll hit back. Aircraft type, so we do have to set this to one aileron and one flap. It's got a normal tail. And then we'll select an image from the standard file. Probably the Habu is the closest looking one. So we'll just do this one. Okay, so then the flight mode setup, I'm gonna set mine up here to switch D uh, so as to avoid the confusion of retracts, okay? And then spoken flight mode, this is where we can set what we have. Okay, so this is gonna be cancel, cancel. This one's gonna be AS3X. And I don't type AS3X plus, I just type AS3X, even though this is gonna be AS3X plus. as X and this is going to be the first time we've set up a bind and fly with AS Rex Plus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I'll scroll this in and come right back. It's way down here. Okay, then this one's going to say off. Now, I don't know for sure if this is going to have the ability to be turned off, but usually we can turn it off even on a bind and fly profile. So we'll do off and then we'll scroll down to off. Okay, and then we're gonna do safe. So sensor assisted flight envelope is gonna be the auto leveling feature um, that's gonna be in tandem with the stabilization, which is AS3X, artificial three axis stabilization. And so this is gonna be what helps get you out of hot water if you need help as a beginner. Um, my recommendation is if you're flying in safe, just make sure that you give yourself a pretty wide berth when you are flying because there are limits to the bank angles and pitch angles. And when I set up a plug and fly, I always open those up. Okay, very good. So channel assign, I know I want channel seven is already set to B, which I don't want. So I'm gonna disassociate that and then channel, what channel do we normally do thrust reverse on? If we have a six channel receiver, we actually have all sorts of additional channels above that are not pluggable. And so we can use a non-pluggable for that. So I would, I think it's like five through nine. Yeah, it's usually seven by default, right? Well, if it's seven by default, then I'll set it to switch G right now, okay? If you guys don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about thrust reverse. So rates and expo, I'm gonna put this on switch F. So this is just kind of my standard setup of five, then 10, and then 20. So you have like a doubling effect. We're gonna reduce this rate. Okay, so five, then 10, then 20. Okay, with the rates dropping down. So that gives us a starting point. And we just do that on all three of the control channels. 
to get us in the ballpark so we could go fly with some level of control on our maiden just in case we have trouble getting it back to the ground. This gives you that. I want a little bit more sensitive sticks by a factor of about half, or I want a little bit less sensitive sticks by a factor of double. And then we'll drop the rates a little bit in that case as well. Okay, so it just gives us somewhere to start. If it's not touchy enough, then I can go up here and make it real sensitive. If it's too touchy, I can come down here. I never have to do that, just so you guys know. Okay, so throttle cut, we're gonna set this to switch H. You can see down here it says minus 100. As I move the stick, that doesn't change. That means throttle cut's working. When I turn it on, you can see the throttle's moving up and down, so throttle cut is on. And we are gonna set up a mix eventually uh, for doing our uh, thrust reverse with pilot fatigue because this is, after all, a jet, an EDF jet. We set up pilot fatigue. So there's three position switch here. But we'll come back to that here in a little bit. I wanna set flap to switch B. And I don't know which direction, so I'll just do a little bit one way and a little bit the other way just to get the direction going. And I set the speed to two seconds. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if I remember right, I think we were like six and 10. Okay, now these are not where they need to be. It's just a direction. So we can figure out if we got the right direction here in a minute once we bind. And you don't have to do all this in this particular order, but this is the order we're gonna do it. So this will be normal. This is gonna be throttle. Oops. Where's throttle? There it is, throttle to, oh wait, we usually do G. We said to switch G. G to throttle. Yeah, that's okay. what we do. And then what's gonna happen is, that's gonna be our pilot fatigue setting, but we have to do some more work, so we'll come back and finish this mix later. Okay. And then the timer, I don't know what the time's supposed to be, but let's go ahead and go with a conservative four minutes with 25% out activating the timer in a countdown method. At one minute, I want a voice call out. At 20 seconds, I want nothing. At 10 seconds, I want a voice call out. And then I want a voice countdown, uh, excuse me, um, tone and vibrate for expiration with the tone every minute thereafter. That's the way I want that. All right, and then we'll be ready to bind. So I'll just kind of keep this over the top of it and we can bind this model now. So we'll plug in the power, then we'll press and hold this button for a moment until it starts flashing. Then we can, okay, I'm gonna hold the plane just to protect us in case it would start going. Okay, as you can see, the elevators went to neutral and we have dance one, okay. So that means AS3X is already active, but not AS3X and safe. If you see two dances, then safe is active. Now I just wanna point out what I just did with that cable. That cable can cause your canopy to pop off if you're not careful. So be careful with that. And also look where those cables go. Man, that's not a very good design. Um, elevator up, elevator down. Roll left, roll right, y'all left, y'all right. Really good amount of input there. So I'll just turn the plane around. I'll go ahead and put the canopy back on. Looks amazing, beautiful, bright lights. Mm -hmm. Okay, elevator up, elevator down. Roll left, roll right, yaw left, yaw right. Take off flaps, landing flaps, so we obviously have that wrong. This re receiver contains a preloaded smart model file. Do you want to load the, oh my goodness. You can, load it from the receiver. Oh. Oh boy. Well, that would have been nice to know. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Do you want to do it? 
Maybe we should see what it does. Yeah, but then okay. it's gonna have everything on like the wrong switches. Mm. Okay, so. Let's just skip let's that for it. now. If you do not use the smart transmitter files, you will need to set up manual file according to the manual, confirm. Okay, so elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right, y'all left, y'all right. Okay, so now let's get flaps going. Okay, so obviously we wanna go to like negative 100, and I'm just looking to see when it's parked here. Looks like negative 100, then take off flaps. I'm gonna go a little bit less than that. I'll go like negative, negative. Actually, that's probably still a little bit much. So negative 40, so just a little bit of deflection and then barn doors. I wanna see how far we can go before we bind. How we doing still, we're still good. I don't hear any gripes from the flap, so I think we're okay there. Okay, so. Takeoff flaps and then landing flaps. Really hard to see the elevator correction, so I'm gonna actually increase that a bunch just to see if it changes. There we go. Okay, so it is going the right direction. I want that to go down when the flaps go down because this is an inboard flap. Okay, so we're gonna see how that works. And then mixing, I'm gonna walk out of the menus. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the right. Okay, so this is probably not gonna work. Up elevator, left aileron, because it's been too long. You have to do it within so many seconds. Yeah, so we'll have to reboot for this part. This is gonna be for the thrust reverse setup. Okay, so in order to reboot, we'll just go and unplug. Plug back in. Okay, so now at this point, up elevator, left aileron. Am I going the right way? Mm -hmm. Up elevator, left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. It says five to, hmm. Wonder if my trims are not correct. Low throttle, up elevator, left aileron. Okay, we'll try again. Sometimes this happens. Okay, so we'll plug it in. Wait for it to boot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna go this way now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that didn't work. Well, that's pretty weird. I wonder what's going on here. I'm gonna go back over to my monitor mode. Up elevator, I'm just looking at my minus 100. Oh, look, my aileron's only 92% compared to 96. Okay, so watch this. I'm gonna scroll down, I have to calibrate my sticks. System setup, disconnect RF. Oh, where's the system settings? Next. Sliders, all the way left, all the way right, and then into the home position on the detent. This is gonna calibrate the sticks. Okay, so that should go to center. Okay, and we need to make that centered, and then all the way, all the way, and then the center. That's the centered. Okay, now I can hit save. Throttle's down, throttle cut's still on still. Okay, so now I'm gonna try this again because what's happening is it wasn't actually indicating a left aileron roll. Up elevator, left aileron. I may have to wait for it to boot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Well, this is so bizarre. Okay, I'm gonna go back to monitor. I wanna see what's going on. So 97 compared to 97. 100 compared to 100. I wonder if it's not doing it because of that. Seems like a pretty small deviation. Okay, so that's getting us to 100. So I just, I did a little trimmer adjustment just to see if that does it. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's really picky. Waiting for the beeps. One, two, three, four, five. One click. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so we'll figure this out. Eventually we'll share our results, but I guess for now we'll just have to walk away from that for a second. So I have to center my trims. Okay, so what else do we wanna do? We wanna set up forward programming. I suppose there's something wrong with the way that I'm doing this or there's something wrong with our Avian. But they wouldn't put that if you couldn't enter it, right? That's what I was gonna ask. This is the first time we've done it since the AS3X Plus, so I'm hoping there's not some technical conflict. Okay, so we have to go into forward programming, gyro settings, save select. Oh boy, which one did we assign that to? I'm gonna walk out. System setup, disconnect RF, channel assign. Um, so switch D. So I'm gonna go up here. I'm actually gonna disassociate that so it doesn't beep. I'll just go to channel 10 for that. So now that I know, well, the other thing you can do is it doesn't have to be channel D. You can also do flight modes. So channel assign. See how it says flight mode? Okay, so that's the more correct way to do it. So now in forward programming, we'll jump in, gyro settings, save select. So aux two, aux five now. See how it's changing now? I'm gonna turn this on. And that means that the generically safe is now on. Safe is off in this setting and so is AS3X. AS, oops. And I gotta switch my servo setup. Oh, you know what? We set it as flight mode, so how does that get flipped? Digital switch setup. Oh, there's flight, there's flight mode, see? I'm gonna set this to negative 100. Some of these menus are a little bit different than I'm used to, guys, so if you see me jumping around in a different way than what you're used to, that's because I am learning the menus with you. But the idea is we'll get you in the air. Okay, so now it's now it's lined up. Remember, those are just audio events. They aren't actually the, the setting. Okay, so now you'll notice that it says safe is on in this switch condition. Everything is off. Now AS3X only is on there, okay? Now I'm gonna show you what the advanced menus look like. slow to update, eh? Oh, look at that.
initiate receiver bind mode. Hmm, interesting. You can force it into bind mode. Okay, so now that you've seen all those functions, I need to spend a little bit of time and see if I can figure out what I'm doing wrong. Okay, so throttle cuts off. There's good throttle. There's no change in state when I change channel seven. Roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down. Y'all left, y'all right. Take off flaps, landing flaps. So everything is working, throttle cuts working. Now I just gotta figure out what the heck is going on with the AV and ESC and why it won't let us into the programming menu, which is the first time we've ever seen that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back in. Try again. One, two. You know, I feel like there was something we had to do one time that was weird. Like we had to go the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Or it was like. Your stick was like in the middle of the range or something weird. Yeah. So I'm just going to try to enter by doing a different stick condition just to. Whatever it takes to get us through. Because if it goes to step two, I think it was. Wasn't it? It was like with a twin engine. So we'll, I'll, I'll see if I can figure it out and come right back. All right, so since we can't get through on our regular setup mode, which basically consists of normally following in this menu down and left and all that, we're gonna do it another way, okay? So real quick, normally you would, you would plug in your system and then it would give you this menu. This menu populates only if you're allowed to get in there. So wait for it to boot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's definitely right. Okay, so then if you do it the other way, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, so. The only thing I can think is if the channel assignment is wrong on this avian for some reason. So I'll show you how to fix it. Okay, so there's this mysterious yellow cable. It's not like a Predator ESC where that does thrust reverse. I'm just gonna unplug this and be a jerk and do it wrong. That's gonna be annoying to listen to, but we're gonna do it. So I'm gonna plug this throttle in here to my programmer so I can energize the circuit from the BEC. Okay, it's gonna turn this thing on. Then I'm gonna put the signal line right there okay and here just because that's annoying to listen to we'll just reboot it okay then i hit select and then we basically get the same menu structure that we would have on here so fixed wing okay so select braking disabled normal Proportional or reverse. Okay, so we'll select that. Brake force, don't know, don't care. Okay, so channel seven is where it was set, but it wasn't turned on, okay? So now that it's turned on, So I don't think I have to do anything here. I think I can just you unplug do it. Save. I you would think I have to hit save, but I don't want to accidentally restore defaults. So okay. I'm just gonna plug this in. That should wake up the system. Because I don't want to lose any of the other settings. Okay. So now this is an Avian programmer. You don't have to usually use that, just so you know. But every once in a while we'll get this weird conglomeration of technical stuff on the white box early samples, okay? So you probably don't need to worry about that. I'm gonna do a full hard reset on both the Avian and the receiver so that they're in sequence. Now, just for grins and giggles, well, you gotta wait for that to be done. Now that the ESC is done, three, four, five, six, Okay, so even though it's not doing it, it doesn't matter.
because now I just have to be on channel seven. So channel seven, one, two, three, four, five, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so throttle cut is off. Forward press. It's not changing. So maybe the camera crew is right. Do you have to set it up in digital switch? No. Okay. It just would go the wrong direction. So we're gonna energize the circuit. We're gonna go back into the programming and see if it saved my change, which I don't think it did. Okay, so we'll hit select. That's really annoying to listen to the beeping. I don't know where you can be to get this angle, but you're gonna have to, because the plane is here. Okay, so fixed wing. Okay, so we'll go select. Break is, see it didn't save it. So I need to go to reverse, and then I need to hit, do I hit select or save? You just hit save there. Yeah, that's what we didn't do. Then you can probably just unplug it. Just won't change anything else, right? Because look, yeah. now it says reverse. Okay, so now we should be able to just plug this in. Okay, so once we do that, then we'll go ahead and get our thrust reverse that we want. Guys, I really like thrust reverse. It's like one of my favorite features because we fly off of a very short runway. So guys, we'll link to this in the video. If you don't know where it is, is this on our tools? I believe so, but I'll be make sure it in is. In the tools, and then also what we'll do, it's at brianphillipsrc.com. Uh, we also many times catch ourselves using the XBC uh, checker, mm -hmm. which is nice. You can check servos, um, two different speeds of servos, and then also batteries, and it's really handy. But then we use this every once in a blue moon, and we kind of assume you guys won't need to use it most of the time. We had, I think our A10, we had to use it on an A10 because it was like the first time they had a dual 40 amp ESC and it wasn't set up right yet. And they had subsequently fixed it. Maybe the EC1500. Okay, so throttle cuts off. Throttle cuts off. Am I plugged in right? Yes, I am. So now my throttle's not working at all. So that's probably not so good. So obviously it didn't like the changes I made, so I'll have to go in and change it again. So I don't know if it doesn't like the thrust reverse being active or if I just didn't save it right. We're gonna find out here in a second. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna just hard boot this again. Did I not reboot it? You didn't, you just plugged in the throttle cable. Oh, that's why. Okay, yeah, it should be fine now. Cause it never actually initiated properly. Oh. Okay, throttle cuts off. Forward thrust, reverse thrust. Throttle cuts on. So now it's in reverse thrust right here. So we just have to do our digital switch setup. Sorry guys, a okay. little bit disjointed on this one, but the truth is when we do a brand new product, we have to learn it too. And so one of the reasons that we do this channel is for people that want to get their box open and get in the air. And we understand there's a lot of questions and sometimes things don't go smooth. This build was one of the easiest builds we've had, even with the problems we had. Yeah. AKA the EDF not being glued in, which is kind of weird. I'm not sure why they didn't catch that, but it would have been easy to not catch since it would have been covered up. Um, okay, so throttle cuts on. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna scroll down to digital switch setup. This is where we're gonna do that there, hon. Okay. So exercise switch G. I wanna change this to minus 100. That'll be our forward thrust. Okay, so then I want this plus 100. That'll be our controllable reverse, or controllable reverse thrust, meaning I have to move this stick to control how much I want, so like if I'm taxiing or whatever. Okay, and then this one's gonna be also minus, or excuse me, plus 100. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll go in and make the mix. Or modify it, we've already started it, okay. So now let's test it real quick. Should be able to put this canopy back on. Okay, so throttle cuts off, forward thrust, reverse thrust, reverse thrust. Okay, forward thrust, throttle cuts on. So now I can scroll down to mixing. I can
can go to this G to throttle. The reason we do G to throttle is because I happen to be on switch G, okay? And so when that condition becomes true, then we're gonna impact the throttle position based on this switch's condition, which happens to be plus 100, okay? So the rate would be 100 or- Wait, change your switch to the right condition. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, you have to set this switch first too. So I only want this to be true in that switch condition, the one that's toward me, that'll be pilot fatigue. I want this one off and I want this one off. I don't really know why it's not grayed out. It's either on or it's off, but there's this like weird ambiguous, like it could be on, it could be off. I'm not sure, I don't quite understand it. Now, so what I wanna do is I wanna make, I can never tell which way to do it. So I shut off my throttle cut. I give a little bit of throttle. See how it's gone? That'll be pilot fatigue. Now keep in mind, um, I'm just listening to the pitch and whine of the motor, and that's gonna tell me when it's actually reached its maximum output. Sometimes that differs a little bit from model to model. I think it was like 168 was where it stopped changing. So I just wanted a nice round number. So the rate is uh, 100, then there's nothing on the negative side because we don't actually even mix with the negative output side. We're just going on the positive output side. You can also look down at the monitor here you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So aux two right there. So you're concentrating on this one. So throttle cuts on. When I mix that, you see how it's plus 100 or plus 100. So it's, that's, that's forward thrust, minus 100. Then that's reverse thrust, but we haven't included this mix yet. And then when this comes in, then it's gonna go ahead and do that tie to where it emulates the throttle condition. Now, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and Shut off the throttle cut. Now watch the throttle position. The throttle is at zero or negative 97 is what it's associated this stick position with. Then it's still. You only have 78. Okay. But you can see that and that helps you to confirm that you're giving full reverse. Okay, so throttle cuts on now. So basically that's our thrust reverse and pilot fatigue. So we have forward thrust, then reverse thrust that we can control with the stick, so for taxing and whatnot. And then we have a reverse thrust pilot fatigue, which means as you're landing, suppose you wanna be really concentrating on the sticks and then you can just quick flip that. Okay, throttle cuts on and thrust reverse is back to neutral or forward. Okay, so that's all the settings. Now, normally you wouldn't have to hook up the programmer to do that. You would just basically scroll over to this menu here. You would hold your stick down and over. It would say step two, then it would say down and over this way. So it would say low throttle, um, up elevator, right aileron. So you would go right aileron, and then you would just see those same menu values. You navigate with this, you step through the menu, you change it with a left, right, not with your scrollies. Not with the scroll, you use this to do those changes. Mm -hmm. And then when you're done, you go to the bottom and then you go save with exit. Yep. It's pretty easy. We've done it on a million different models. So it's one of the most convenient ESC setups that you can have. That being said, because this is a, an early release, there's a third function that we're not sure about and that is the center of gravity. I can assume that we're gonna be in the ballpark where we are, okay? But I'm just gonna show you where I think it is. I think it's there, okay? I think it's there. I can tell you where I'm balanced. I'm probably balanced a little bit nose heavy right now, okay? But you see where the mark is? Mm -hmm. So what that tells me is when I fly it, I may expect this plane to be a little bit more stable and I may not be able to flare in landing the way that I want to. If you want more flare in landing, you can slide this battery back and they've left lots of room, but I, I'm not super fond of where that antenna ended up. That antenna is, you don't wanna kink that, okay? 
So be super careful with this antenna because that's a coax cable. And a coax cable, when kinked, you actually break the antenna media inside, okay? Or you can break the antenna media. Um, also, let's talk about lights. We didn't talk about lights earlier, but boy, are they bright mm -hmm. and awesome. And I gotta say, um, I can definitely see the AS3X is working. We don't have to check the direction of travel on that. If you want, put your hand on it if it's too small and then move the plane. You can feel it with your hand or you can just watch and rotate the plane. I'm in AS3X. And then if you wanna check safe, you'll flip the plane on its back. It's gonna find the quickest route to level, okay? And then look at the elevator. As I lift it up, the elevator is gonna go up like it's trying to pull out of a dive. And then when I point it up like this, it's gonna push the elevator down like it's trying to pull out of a climb, okay? You can also check your pitch and bank angle limits by moving the sticks like this, and then you can rotate the plane until you hit the limit. And that's the limit. And then for the elevator, that's probably about the limit right there. Okay, now down angle, you can see that's probably about the limit there. So you got pretty good bank angles. So you see when the aileron goes flat, that's what they've limited you to, okay? So that isn't something you have to check, but it's just kind of convenient to know. Now, I also have the off setting, and the off setting would be when you hand your controller to the old timer who loves flying without stabilization, but still enjoys flying the new planes, okay? Because it is a feel thing, okay? Some people don't like it. I love AS3X, I love stabilization. I definitely don't fly with safe anymore, but when I was a beginner, Safe was the difference between success and failure for me. And if you're using safe and people are giving you trouble at the club or whatever, whatever gets you in the air, I don't care if you have to endure some, um, you know, hazing, do what you gotta do. First of all, find a club that people don't haze you for learning to fly because learning to fly is hard. And if you are doing it, then you're making the right move, okay? If you're not learning to fly, then you're just doing what everybody else does, which is, I, I want to do this thing, but I'm just not gonna put any effort into it. That's just foolishness, okay? Remember, you're not guaranteed tomorrow, so when, and if you decide to fly RC or helicopters or airplanes in real life, whatever it happens to be, there's no better time than the current to get involved. I understand that there's also times in life, seasons of life, where you're gonna wanna have a break from RC, whether it's you know, financial situation or maybe kids are young and you just don't have time for it or you moved away from a flight club that worked really good for you or you had property where you could fly and then you lost access to it for whatever reason. Those are good reasons, but just try to get back as quick as you can. And when you're coming back and if you need to get a refresher course, we'll do that for you here on Brian Phillips RC. And remember, just because it doesn't go smooth doesn't mean it's not a good plane. Uh, you have to remember that this plane is a product sample we got the number one, which is unusual. You just like number seven or something like that. So because of that, some of these weirdities that we ran into, and even with those rolled into this ball of wax, this is still about as easy a build as you can get. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, I love the softness. I love the softness. I wish they were all like that. Um, it seems to me that these springs, these simple trailing link oleos are the way to go super basic, super simple. Sure, it would look nicer if they could embed this inside or something like that, but I don't know that you can get away with it in this size class. It's just too small. Um, and then I think the vast majority of people that are buying this jet are gonna end up buying it so that they can hand launch and belly land on the grass. So they have given us good accommodations for that on this particular model. Now, I love wheels up, I love wheels down, but just remember one thing you gotta remember when you're flying this, if you put full landing flaps and you land, you're probably gonna break your flaps off. So you need to be prepared to put them up, okay? I'm not saying you can't land with them and then these things are gonna pop off as well. And that's fine too. I have a dumb question. If you're belly landing, would you just take the ventral fins off or just let them pop off if they come off? I guess it depends on your taste. I would fly with them because I want them to be on the plane. Right. But there are people that would say, just take them off, yeah. It's okay. not really a dumb question. It's just a, a preference issue. And I, it, the thought like hadn't even occurred to me 
that you would just take them off. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, that's all we got for you. The Viper from E-Flight in the 64 millimeter EDF size. It's all new and hopefully it's gonna be the next big thing, even though it's not that big. Um, I'm really excited for it. I can't wait to fly it, which we're gonna go do right now. 4S 2200 is what we're using. We kind of hope that's correct. And the center of gravity, we hope we're about right where we are, okay? If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll do our best to update you uh, if we get answers to what the heck happened on the Avian ESC as well. Probably we'll follow in a future video. Um, that's not necessarily about this one, although it might be about this one if we, when we do a second thoughts. That might mm -hmm. be when we update the audience. Also, the ventral fins, are they on the right way? Yes, they are. Yeah, because they're... Because they're painted on the outside. Yeah, gray on the inside. Um, and then also keep in mind, really easy to take the landing gear off, which is really nice. So if you decide to go wheels up, wheels down for a few flights and you're like, hey, I want to just take those off, get rid of the drag. Because at the end of the day, you know, these landing gear are maybe not the most beautiful thing on an EDF jet, okay? So you're probably gonna wanna do some wheels up, wheels down, and then pull them off just to see what it can really do. So hopefully we answered all your questions. Um, with our recent firmware update on the NX-10, we've been having really good luck with this. And the AS3X Plus has been palatable so far. Um, the one plane we put it in was very good it felt rock solid and having a steerable nose gear that had uh, basically a higher amplitude of stabilization on it makes a world of difference. Now, I'm not gonna tell you to factory reset your receiver and add that feature because I don't know how well this thing is gonna be tuned right away, but I can tell you this right now, if you have a six channel receiver with an open channel, there's no reason you shouldn't split that off and throw that steerable nose gear onto its own function. Now you have to factory reset the entire receiver to get access to those menus though, okay? And if you do that, you're gonna lose access to some of the bind and fly stuff. And so because we're doing this as a review, we wanna make sure you see how it flies right off the cuff, out of the box, and hopefully your EDF module is glued in. But ours is now. Okay, that's all we got for you tonight. If you guys want to help support Brian Phillips RC, and there are four or five different good ways to do it. Obviously, you can watch the videos, smash the like button right away if you haven't already done it, and then come back for more. Those are obviously just on the YouTube side of things. We still think the best way to support us is buying planes, buying transmitters, buying batteries, whatever it is you're already going to be buying. If we bring something to your attention like this plane and you decide to purchase it, follow the link in the video description below, then they know that we sent you over to make that purchase. Now, just because you go over there doesn't mean you have to buy it, but if you follow the link and you decide to buy it, then we'll get commission on those sales. But remember, our goal is not necessarily to get commission, it is to get you flying the right plane. Because at the end of the day, if you love this plane, you're gonna be a happy customer and you're gonna come back for more, not just because we helped you get it set up, but because they make good planes. Okay, just because it's a good plane doesn't mean it's a good fit for you. Okay, mm -hmm. we're gonna help you decide that by showing you the full picture. And I don't wanna say that we're not biased or anything. We are biased, but you know our biases, okay? So we're gonna help you to distinguish between this and other current offerings. And if you see something that we haven't done and you want us to do it, let us know in the comments below. Uh, we'll try to work it into the schedule, but we generally do everything we can get our hands on, okay? Um, also, if you don't want to support us by buying this particular plane, maybe you've already got the Viper 70, which is an amazing product. Very, very good. Maybe you've already got the Viper 90. Maybe you just don't care or you don't like Vipers. There's tons of other great products. You can go to brianphillipsrc.com or bprc.me. That's the same ad, just a short link that takes you to brianphillipsrc.com so you don't have spelling mistakes. Then you can go over there and you can do a comparison side by side by type. Camera crew is working on size classifications and possibly some other classifications for easy sorting, but that is yet to be determined on exactly when that's gonna roll out. But for now, you can go by affiliate like Horizon Hobby or E-Flight here, compared to like FMS or you know Banggood or uh, RC Going or whoever happens to be that we worked with on a particular video uh, versus the, the brand of the plane versus the type of plane, okay? Or car, or truck, or boat, or whatever it happens to be, okay? 
because there's so many videos on Brian Phillips RC. We understand that not, we don't even remember all of them because there's like no. 2,025 videos up. We've yeah. been doing this for almost 10 years now. And so we really appreciate the outpouring of support over the years. It's been impeccable and wonderful, but also it's been a lot of work. So we know you guys appreciate that. And the best way you can help us is just buy planes, transmitters, all that stuff and watch the video content. But if you just really can't get away with that and you don't want to do that for whatever reason, cause your wife is threatened to leave you or shoot you or whatever. If you buy another plane, we understand snakes in the basement. Just remember tip the UPS guy. We have PayPal, Patreon, YouTube super thanks and YouTube members, uh, YouTube members and Patreon being monthly support and YouTube super thanks and PayPal mm -hmm. being one time donations. Any of those are always welcome and we appreciate them, but we still would rather you take your money, dump it into a plane or helicopter or whatever it is that you want to drive, you know, put in the water or put in the air. Okay. Cause then you're with us doing it and not just watching us enjoy this stuff. Okay. I want to get you guys out of the chair and in the air on Brian Phillips RC. And we think that our aim is working. We're trying to grow an audience of really faithful believers in RC. I want to give you guys the best chance at success for the cheapest price possible at the right time at the right plane. Okay. All right. Any questions, leave them in the comments below and I can't wait to get outside and fly this, which we're going to do right now. And there is so much right around the corner, quite literally. So please stay tuned and come back for more. All right, so we did get the CG and we did find out that 3200 4S, 30C or higher is okay. We're gonna use 50C. If you're using a smaller 4S, you wanna probably use 50C or higher. And let's talk about the center of gravity. 75, right? Mm -hmm. 75 to what? 85. From the leading edge, I'm gonna go out and mark just a little bit out. Okay, so there's 75. To 85. Mm -hmm. And so we felt pretty good with our markings or with our flights. And uh, we did end up in a tree, which you'll see in the videos if you can't tell from the crash damage. Um, I would be surprised and also a little bit flattered. We did have to 3D print our own nose cone because it got lost in the tree. Uh, if we ever find it, that'd be cool, but we just don't want to try to order something on a, a plane that's not been released yet. Okay, so there's the center of gravity marks as we would typically mark them. Remember, we're testing this with the bigger of the batteries that are recommended, and we had pretty good luck with this battery setup. So I'm gonna just put it all the way back, right in front of this receiver. And right here, on the back holes, it's nose heavy. On the front holes, it's pretty much perfect. So as you can see, she lives to see another day. Miraculous victory for Brian Phillips RC. Hope you enjoyed the Unbox Build Radio setup. Got all the answers to your questions. If we didn't, we'll be coming around a little bit with the AS3X Plus and we hope you'll be here for it. Stay tuned.